Welcome traders. Uh, just going to give this another 30 seconds before we get going here. Um, what I'd like to do before we start is just a quick audio and visual check if you can hear me and you can see the Ticknail welcome screen. Could you type a Y in the chat box, please? If you can hear me and you can see the Ticknail welcome screen, could you just type a Y into the chat box? Testing audio, one, two, three. Thanks, Adam. <clears throat> okay, that's 2 p.m. British GMT time. Okay, we are going to get started here before before we, uh, before we jump into today's presentation, just important to adhere to the risk disclaimer, trading futures and options comes with a high risk of losing money due to leverage. Always ensure you understand these risks before trading. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College, then joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would become significant losing positions. I gave back all the gains that I'd made and ultimately took a six-figure financial hit to my capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that most crucially suited my personality and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process-orientated, and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading in being really a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment in that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus on the next hundred trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed accounts vehicle, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and most importantly, mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing uh, in-depth daily technical breakdowns and assessing the fundamental drivers for the day ahead. I also provide Tickmill with um, trade ideas, focusing on three to five markets a day that I'm tracking with opportunities that are developing. 
I post those through the through the Tickmill TradingView account. You can uh, you can access that um, and subscribe to follow uh, follow those setups on a daily basis uh, through uh, through trade through your TradingView account. And most recently, I have been responsible for growing Tickmill's e mini strategy group, where I provide a daily specific trade plan and intraday updates and alerts. Since its inception in April, it's delivered over 1,400 points of profit. Uh, this is the, an example of the daily trade plan. It's a two to three minute video in which I uh, highlight the setup that I'm looking to, the, the two scenarios that I'm looking to trade for the day ahead and, uh, and give the specific levels and how I'm looking to, uh, to play the market for the day ahead. And I post that into the Facebook group uh, on a daily basis uh, it's free to access the, the group. You just have to send through a member request. I'm just going to quickly uh, put that group into, which there's a link in the chat there now uh, for you to request access and you can access the daily, um, daily setups. I also provide uh, some snippets of institutional research uh, that, I, um, that I have access to. And like I say, I give the uh, the daily plan and that's delivered before the market opens so you've got ample time to uh, to set up your charts and get ready to uh, to follow along i've also you can also um, get my chart template up here at the top it should be pinned um, in one of the in one of the featured uh, posts there you can actually get my exact chart template uh, put onto your charts and then for those traders who are looking to advance things further and, uh, and who are really serious about mastering the, uh, the e mini s p on a daily basis and are looking to take their trading to the next level. We've recently launched a Telegram group. A Telegram group is where I give the, in real time, this, the, the trades I'm taking and how I'm managing those trades. Um, and that's also done through a live stream during the opening hour of the cash session in new york uh tuesday wednesday thursday and then outside of those times i'm updating the telegram group with exactly what it is i'm doing and how i'm looking to uh, to trade and how i'm managing the positions and uh just in november alone there uh did uh, 123 points of uh, profits 7.4 percent of upside just uh, just for the november month so that, uh, that gives you a flavor of, uh, of where I'm coming from. Um, just a brief piece of housekeeping. If you have any questions as we uh, progress through today's presentation, you just want to make a note of those. And then I will um, I'll do a brief Q&A at the end of the session. And I'll cover off any questions that have been posted in the chat or into the Q&A box. Uh, just, um, just pop those in there as you think of them, if, you th if there are any questions as we progress through the presentation. So moving to today, and what we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to basically introduce you to the e-mini and micro S&P contracts. In today's session, I will also introduce you to the instrument structure and its advantages, along with highlighting some unique market mechanics that really enhance the trading information for this product. I will also introduce you to my core trading strategy for the e-minis and demonstrate how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns. The e-mini or the e-mini or the ES or the SPOOS is a futures contract that essentially tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. It is traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange via their Globex electronic trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week using the contract symbol ES. e mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities, cryptos, and forex currencies. However, when traders refer to the e mini or the e minis, they're generally referring to the most liquid contract of all, and that's the futures contract that tracks the SP 500 stock market index. e mini futures were originally launched in September. 1997 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P full contract, but it had become too expensive for the little guy to trade. So the CME created the E-mini contract, which was one-fifth the size of the large S&P 500 futures contract and it required only one-fifth of the margin to trade. The E-mini became a huge success, not only with non-professional uh, traders, but also with professional traders too. 
The micro e-mini futures contract is the same as the regular S&P 500 uh, e-mini contract in every respect, except it's one-tenth of the size. That is, each one point of movement in the S&P uh, 500 index is worth $5 uh, per micro e-mini contract compared to the $50 for trading the e-mini. And the margin to trade a micro e-mini contract is also one-tenth of the size. So let's look at the benefits. Well, it's equally easy to go long or short. You either buy or sell the current e-mini contract and there is no uptick rule. It's a 24-hour trading environment, which makes the e-mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE can be played with the one trading vehicle. It's an electronic trading platform, so your orders are entered instantaneously, and when executed, you're notified instantaneously. Changing and cancelling orders is trivial, no need for phone calls to brokers, etc. And you know exactly where you stand every second you're in the trade. It's a level playing field insofar as the Globex electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market, and trades are executed in the order they are received. It has tight bid ask spreads because there is so much volume traded through uh, the e mini. The difference between the bid and the ask price is only ever one tick or 0.25 index points, which is the minimum price movement. It has a large depth of market. Again, because this contract is so liquid, there is plenty of room and volume either side of the last traded price for large orders to be filled with minimum slippage. It's volatile at times indeed, but it's not unmanageable. The e is, is very active every day, which gives the day trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, it's pretty difficult to trade a sleepy market on a daily basis. But the e volatility is also manageable, except around some key, uh, key data releases, the FOMC, non-farm payrolls, et cetera. One of the most attractive things about the e-mini and the e-micros are the low brokerage rates. Broker commissions for trading e-minis and micros continue to fall. This excludes exchange um, clearing and regulatory fees. And when you factor this in, your round trip or in-out brokerage commission is very attractive. It's got a low market margin requirement. So to open a, a day trading position with Tickmill, you only need a thousand US dollars to open a micro account. Remember, these are the absolute minimums and really should be trading with more capital behind your positions. It's a lower tax rate than trading uh, Forex or stocks. Income from trading e-mini futures is taxed as a capital gain. Now, there's no trade-by-trade -trade accounting. Another advantage of the tax treatment of the e-mini futures is the tax reporting requir requirements are minimal. In particular, like I say, no trade-by-trade -trade accounting, only the net profit for the full year is needed. So, now we understand the instruments and the trading venue, I want to demonstrate some of the unique aspects of this contract. The fact that the e-mini is a derivative of the S&P 500 allows us to access some unique information commonly referred to as market internals. Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on a car, giving indication of performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. So let's take a closer look <coughs> at what market internals are, and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. First, volume. As a unique feature of, the, of trading the exchange traded derivative, as opposed to a contract for difference or Forex volume data, uh, which is at best incomplete. Um, there's no central for, foreign exchange, and the banks who dominate for, Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of actual volume, which is direct, shared directly by the CME, available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the market. Spikes in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. Next, we have the NYSE tick. This tick index gives us the relationship of stocks ticking up versus ticking down. The tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday traders. For example, if there are 3,000 stocks trading on the New York Stock Exchange and 1,500 trade higher from their previous price and 500 trade lower, then their last the last price the tick will read is plus 1,000. When using uh, the tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit a trade. Tick readings of plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong, as we typically train between the 1,000 levels most of the time on the New York Stock Exchange. Tick readings within the 400 bracket indicate chop, and we want to ignore them. 
On a range day, we can look to fade ticket streams. I apply a moving average, so it's easier for me to see the trend distribution of the tick for the trading session. Another great way of using the tick is that when we get a high tick and a high in price at the exact same print, this more often than not will indicate the high of the day. When a high tick prints without a simultaneous high in price, we can continue to make new highs until a new high tick is reached. And the reverse is, is obviously true for a low tick followed by new lows. Next, we have the advanced decline line or the AD line for short. The, this indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. There are roughly 3,000 stocks on the listed on the NYSE and 3,000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of uh, plus 1,500 is very bullish, and a reading of over 2,000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, readings of negative 1,500 and below are very bearish, and readings of negative 2,000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are indicative of trending days, when once the market opens, it just continues to trend all the way into the close. We look to the AD line in conjunction with the breadth ratio to confirm these trending days. For example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks would yield a net plus 2,000 reading, um, and that's extremely bullish. It would take a large catalyst to shift the market direction with a reading this bullish. If on the open, you continue to see the AD line moving plus 500, plus 700, plus 900, this is a sign of market strength. If, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, this divergence is important to monitor and could be a sign that the market is about to turn. Next, we have the breadth volume ratio composed of uh, volume flowing into up stocks versus the volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth ratio is expressed by up volume, down volume, uh, minus down volume. This reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are at any given time during the day versus where the breadth ratio opened for the day. For example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio is 2 to 1 positive. Twice as much volume is flowing into up stocks as down stocks. If by 10.30 the market has sold off, but we now have a breadth ratio of 3 to 1 positive, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to buy the pullback looking for a long setup. Last but by no means least, we have the cumulative delta. This is a cornerstone of order flow analysis. Cumulative delta summarizes uh, the buy versus sell activity and can really help traders determine market direction, trend strength, support and resistance areas and more. The delta refers to the difference between buyers and sellers. Delta is positive when purchases are exceeding sales and delta is negative when the sales exceed the purchases. Cumulative delta consolidates the accumulated delta information and plots it on our charts. By recording and displaying a running count of whether and by how much buyers or sellers are in control, order flow traders like myself can better extrapolate the flow of the market. Delta is an excellent tool for detecting divergence between price and the underlying order flow in the market. When price is making new highs, but Delta isn't making new highs, it suggests an underlying weakness to the market and often precedes a pullback or a reversal. So now we understand the market internals and the um, the unique insights that they provide. I want to briefly walk you through my strategy. By understanding the market context in which we are trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades, mean reversion in ranging environments and momentum trades in trending environments, both of which are going to be underpinned by the internals. Every day I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas that are derived from multi time frame volume profile analysis. This allows me to avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop. The support and resistance action areas have three purposes. They can act as entry levels in mean reversion setups. In directional or trend environments, the action areas act to confirm momentum entries. And lastly, I use them for targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day's price action. These levels are often important to define the bias for the day. The previous volume point of control, the highest volume price uh, from the previous day, where buyers and sellers perceive the price to be fair value for that session. I confirm the current market context and the dominant side for the market in terms of the near term, 
uh, one to three days, and then one to three weeks, and then one to three months. I also highlight quantitative probability plays based on where the, this cash regular trading hour session opens in relation to the prior day's range, either above, below, or in range, based on key levels and the probability of price testing these levels over an extended data set. These can prove really useful for trade entry, exit, and management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis, as this helps to inform current market context, whether or not we're in balance in relation to the current volatility stats. Equally, we can confirm market out of balance, and this can inform our bias for the day. I also use the volatility stats to inform uh, stop sizing, trade execution, and management. So now that we uh, that gives you a brief overview of the strategy, let me uh, just walk you through some examples of how this stuff all comes together in real time. So on this chart, there is a couple of things I want uh, I want you to pay attention to. This uh, gold line that you can see that's moving up, that moves, um, this is referred to as the full session mid. So for the, the, the current trading day we're in, this amber line represents the 50% of the range that we're trading in. The next uh, line I want you pay, to pay attention to is this blue line, which is a volume weighted average price for the cash session. So that's the price that has, is having most, has had most of the volume trade during this current cash, cash session. So how I use these two um, inputs is that if when the cash, bear with me, excuse me. Get rid of that, sorry about that guys. Um, so if we are trading below the, um, below the VWAP and the full session mid, when the cash session opens, we are going to be looking to play short positions. So this gives us our, an immediate read on the market bias as we open the cash session. So we are, in this instance, we'll be looking for the break of support levels. So then what we have is we want to have our internals confirm that. So in this instance, we open the cash session, we trade around the primary support area, we're trading below the mid, below the full session VWAP, so we've got a bearish bias. We've got a negative tick distribution, it's trading below the zero line, and the moving average is below the zero line as well. We've got negative AD line reading, and it's declining, and we've got negative breadth, and we've got negative delta because we're trading below this gray line in terms of the delta. So we have all four market internals confirming the idea that we are going to be trading the break of the support, and what, as I said previously, I use the next support area as my target for the trade. When we get down into this support area, so we're trading through 4385-ish there, when we get into this support area, notice we get this tick extreme reading. This lower green line, uh, green line represents minus 1,000, so that's a signal to cover the trade. So from so the, the easily a 10-point trade there, um, potentially a bit more, but certainly that's a 10-point trade, uh, and we get the confirmation to exit. Here, we come into the cash session. We're trading at the VWAP and at the, uh, and at the full session mid, and we start to climb. Now, as we climb above the full session mid and VWAP, so we're looking at long positions, so we want to be trading the break of the primary resistance. What we're looking for then is do our internals confirm? Now, one of the rules I have for my strategy is that three out of the four internals at a minimum must confirm the trend direction and one of those have to be the delta so delta is the uh, has to confirm the trades and then we need two out of the other three to also be to also support the trade for it to uh, for it to be a setup so in this instance we have a positive tick distribution and we have a positive ad line although we have breadth declining we do have very positive delta so that would be a long trade through the 4385 area. And again, we're targeting the next, uh, the next resistance zone as our upside objective at 44. So there's a 15 point trade and we're confirmed by our VWAP full session mid and the positive tick distribution, positive AD line and positive Delta. Another example here. So we come into the session we open up and we test the support zone. And this is important. As we test this support zone, we have a positive 
tick distribution, we're trading above the zero line, we have a positive AD line, we have positive breadth, and we have positive delta. So the two trades here, there's a reversion trade. So you take the, the test here of the support zone just above 42.55. The target is through full session mid, full session VWAP. By the time you test that area, this would be a risk-free trade. And then it extends up into the 42.80, where you look to take profit, giving a, a great return. And then the next trade comes when we, when we break out above the uh, 42.87 here, as long as we have positive tick, positive AD line, positive breath, positive delta. So we engage again then on the long side, targeting the next resistance zone up to 43. So this, this setup so far in this, in this session has given about 50 points of upside. And what we know when we get up into this resistance zone is we don't get a tick extreme. So that means as we make new highs in price without a new high in tick, we can actually trail our stops on this trade and ultimately we get a tick extreme reading on the test of the third resistance up to 43.20. So all in all, there's about 70 points of upside in that one session just using these tools to confirm the, the trade. Here we come into the day below the full session mid, below the full session BWAP. So we're looking initially to see if the internals confirm a setup to play the break of the primary support. We test down, we test back into the full session uh, VWAP, we're rejected from there. So the trade now, as we get down into this area, we have negative tick distribution, negative AD line, negative breath, negative delta. So we're playing a break of 43.30 and we get a move down there into the primary support at 43.16. So another 14 point trade, again, just simply using the internals and the um, full session mid and VWAP to give us trend direction. In this instance, we open the day, well above the full session min and above the full session VWAP. So then we look to our internals. What are they telling us? Well, we've got uh, positive readings on the tick distribution, on the AD line, on the breadth, and on the delta. And so we play the break of 43.40 up into the 43.55 area. Um, we can actually hold this trade because we don't get a new high tick and play for the second uh, resistance there at 43.59. So again, another straightforward setup using the internals, delivering between 15 and 20 points of upside there. So if you look at one more example, and then I'm gonna do something uh, a bit more useful in terms, of, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of just going through loads and loads of prior chart examples, we're actually gonna go onto the live charts in a minute. Uh, so today in this session, we open below the full session mid, below the full session VWAP, tick distribution uh, was positive, but uh, tra tra trading at the zero line. Um, and then we, uh, we see the AD line rolling over, breath rolling over, and we have a negative delta. And by the time we break this support area, we've also got negative tick. So there we get a signal on the short side through 43.34. And we are looking then to see when we get the test here, just around the 43.20 um, area, we get a tick extreme reading. So in this instance, um, you would have the, the, that would have been a signal to uh, move your stops to entry and see if the trade can continue down to the downside without getting another tick extreme reading. And we make a new low. We don't get a new low in the tick. So that allows us to hold the trade. And then as we get down, we trail our stops through the uh, support zones, which in this instance are acting as resistance. And ultimately we get uh, a tick, we don't, we don't even get a tick extreme there. The first tick extreme reading that comes in is on the test of the fourth support level um, down just above the 43 handle. So again, another easy 20, 30 points of potential profit there, just using these tools to confirm. So like I said, what I want to do now, now that you've seen a few examples of how this works um, from historic charts, what I'm actually gonna do now is open up today and I'm going to uh, talk you through the trade plan that I'm going to be posting into the Facebook group after, after this session is finished. So in terms of where we are um, today, we obviously have seen a, a couple of days of sell-off here. I, I, actually, I'm just, just before we do that, a um, couple of trades that we've had. We had this long setup at the beginning of the week here and traded up into uh, the resistance zone. I took 15 points out of that trade. We had uh, positive delta, positive tick, uh, positive a, um, AD line, and the breath was flatlining there. 
Um, but uh, that gave a signal and we, like I say, 15 points taken out of that one. Um, yesterday, we had a short sell setup um, and I, I actually, I, I, I put on um, a larger position to try and use half of the, the trade to take profits uh, and then to adjust my stops. That trade didn't actually work out for me yesterday. Um, I took, I, as, as we bounced a bit, I took half of my position off for a small loss. And then when the trade started to move in my favor, I trailed the stop a little bit too quickly and I got taken out at break even. So again, nothing, nothing in these markets works 100% of the time. Um, and I wanna make that absolutely clear. But what I can tell you using this strategy, you can have a much higher conviction in your setups and your execution because of these internal confirmations. So heading into today, we are, um, we've seen a, a move higher from the support zone that I posted yesterday. Um, we are trading within yesterday's range. So there are some statistical tests that should set up. One of them being that as we open up today, we would anticipate a pullback to the uh, full session mid and VWAP. If we find support there today, then what I'd be looking for will be to play a break of this blue line, which is the Globex highs. As long as we have broad market strength in terms of our internals, I'll be looking at potential long positions through 46.30, targeting a test of 46.43. And then if we can get through there and, um, and really start to see a bit of a short squeeze develop, again, we'll be, we're looking for these internals to be confirming uh, so we, we won't know that until the market opens. Then we can look to get through 46.50 and target the pivotal test of the 46.70 area is, uh, is, is the plan on the upside today. If we come into the session and we roll over and we're trading below the full session mid and below the full session VWAP here, then the play is going to be taking out the Globex lows at 45.70. We we'll obviously want our internals confirming the broad market weakness. Then we look for a test of uh, yesterday's lows, 45.57. If we can get through there, we could see a bit of a meltdown back into the 45.50 area. So that's how I'm. This is the this is how I'm thinking about the the day. I what I what I do each day is I develop two market maps. One of them is going to be for a, a short position, um, and one of them is going to be for a long. Um, I have, the, depending upon the context of the market, one of them has a higher probability of playing out. But because uh, we, we're waiting for these internals to open up, I, I know that if we open up uh, today and we, have, um, and we have very strong internals, then I'm gonna favor the upside. Equally, if we open up today and we have very weak internals, then I'm gonna switch to be looking at the short side and I'll have that market map and plan already in place for the level I'm looking to trade and how I'm looking to manage the trade. And that, that's what I deliver each day into that Facebook group um, for, uh, for, for people to take advantage of. And obviously in terms of the Telegram chat, I'm actually sharing the trades in real time along with a bunch of other insights. And, uh, and you get the opportunity to look over my shoulder in real time as I live stream the opening hour of the cash session, and I give you my uh, my 15 years of uh, of experience. I'm not a guru by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, like I say, I've been at this for 15 years. I've uh, I've learned some hard and at times very costly lessons that you can actually benefit from as you develop as a trader yourself. So that concludes the uh, presentation for today. Are there any questions? I'm just going to take a sip of water here. Let me post a couple of links into the chat. Um, uh, let me see. I'm going to post my um, LinkedIn profile. If, any, if you want to reach out to me about the Telegram group or, or about the um, Facebook group, you can message me through my uh, LinkedIn uh, profile there. I'll also put in the Ticknail um, trading view link so you can follow my um, follow my daily trades in other markets so I'll put that in there and I'll just repost the Facebook group all you have to do is send an invite and um, and you get accepted in there and you can access my daily trade plan you can monitor that for a while and see how uh, how effective it is. So that's in there as well. Okay, if there aren't any questions, guys, I'm going to wrap this session up here. I hope you found it. Uh, hope you found it useful. And um, 
and I hope to see you in the in the Facebook group or the Telegram chat. Uh, do note that to access the Telegram group, you need to have a, a funded Tickmill Futures account. That's the only stipulation to to access that. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Hope this helps.